This AYL episode may be shocking. This week, Rhea and I take electric bikes around Coronado Island, visiting everything from beaches to bistros as we enjoy the ocean breeze from 360 degrees. Then, we're headed back out on the trail with Grand Staircase ATV tours as they show us the best places to ride around Tropic. Finally, we are joining the State Cook-Off Association as we watch a couple of kids put their cooking skills to the ultimate test as they compete against the pros. It's all heading your way right now at your leisure is next. Now that makes a career change seem likely. Look at that boat. I know, isn't it phenomenal? It. Obviously we're not in Utah today. Hi everybody, welcome to At Your Leisure. I'm Chad Booth. And I'm Rhea Rossi Booth, and we are in Coronado Island, if you may have guessed, with these gorgeous Navy boats coming by. You know, every now and then your life just gets a little bit too hectic, a little bit too stressful and everything, and you just, you kind of want to kick it back an notch or two. You want to turn down the dial on your electric assist. Yeah, no kidding. This is this is a great place to get away. So we've come down here for the weekend. We're just going to kind of junk it around on uh, e-bikes and just kind of uh, take it in at a slower pace. Let's let's go explore. Oh, well, I actually want to go back and catch that destroyer. <laughs> he does. He'd swim out there if I'd let him. We really don't know what we're going to discover today, but why don't you all come along with us? Oh yeah, let's do it. Um, so we rent bikes. Uh, we have the regular bikes and the e-bikes, and then we have kayak and paddleboard rentals that we also send out. It's a very bike-friendly town, so you guys can ride bikes. Um, and then we also have the bay right here, so um, it's a great opportunity to go kayaking or paddleboarding. You can come down to Coronado and you go to the bike shop, rent an e-bike or regular bike, or they have kayak tours, and you can actually get out on the water and uh, just uh, Go buy all the Navy ships, it's cool. <laughs> See, this is why I like coming down here. This is the very sort of thing that drives me nuts. I love to see that stuff. Look at that bird fly, go Navy. Go Navy, God bless America, woo! I like the beach a lot, so I like just being like steps away from the beach all the time. I like to be like a tourist in my own city, so there's always fun opportunities to like try new things here too. So. I'll see if I can take a picture of you. Put your head through there. <laughs> In being John Malkovich. And then, and then put your hand through here. <laughs> I'll get you, my pretty. And your little dog, too. And your little dog, too. We're going to experience lots of very pretty views. There's the downtown views, there's the bridge, there's the beach, so you kind of get a glimpse of it all, like the city and the beach side. So. And then there's also lots of cool restaurants and places to stop, take pictures. So it's really like an all-around experience. So if you uh, run out of things to do on Coronado, uh, riding around on your bike, which I don't think you can do in a weekend, you can always put your bike on the ferry boat and shuttle over to San Diego and ride the waterfront over there. Oh, there's just countless things to do. And look at all these people having fun on the water. Isn't that great? Yeah, we maybe have to squeeze in a little time for watercraft before I'd love we're it. done. All right. Well, while we figure out what we're doing next, you go to our where to. Mother Nature never fails to bewilder those who gaze upon her meticulously sculpted rock structures. 
We're lucky enough to behold many of these naturally formed geological art installations thanks to the tectonic activity of the Grand Staircase. Though these breathtaking formations exist throughout the Million Acre Monument, these are some of the special treats you're given if you ride outside of Tropic on a little road known as Cottonwood. Owner-operator of Grand Staircase ATV Tours, Joey Shakespeare, is an expert on the monument, as well as he should be. He's been giving guided ATV tours in the area for two decades. So we're in the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. It's huge. Um, we're on the, what's called the Cottonwood Road. Um, takes us down past some cool highlights, places like Grosvenor Arch here. Uh, Grosvenor Arch actually wraps into what they call the Coxcomb. That's a monocline. Uh, it's a fault line that's shifted. Um, this area here they call the gut <laughs> because it's one of those places that you just get stuck in that's uh, along that fault line. The gnarled rock layers surrounding Cottonwood Road can take you as far as even the next town. With trails that offshoot from the main road and plenty to stop and see along the way, this adventure can be as short or as long as you please. Uh, this road will take you down all the way through to um, Highway 89 south of Kanab. A uh, great UTV trail, off-road trail, um, goes along the river. Um, the total trail is probably 45 miles long from the where you get off the pavement at Kodachrome State Park. There is some trails that go off of this road that can take you out and dead end and not go anywhere. There's some slot canyons that you can get off and hike into, uh, Cottonwood Narrows North, Cottonwood Narrows South. There's the Hackberry Trail, uh, Hackberry Canyon, that's a slot canyon. This is an area we can go and ride 70, 80 miles on approved um, monument trails. Although the Grand Staircase area may be one of the most remote places in the West, the access to all the adventure on the Cottonwood Road is nothing short of phenomenal. You can just take um, Highway 12 East to Cannonville, uh, turn right in Cannonville, come out to the Kodachrome State Park. The road will turn into a dirt road at that point, and you're actually on the Cottonwood Road um, where the turnoff is to Kodachrome State Park. Um, like I said, it's about 45 miles. If you take the road all the way through, there is a lot of trails that go off, uh, spurs that come off of that main trail. So just go prepared. That's a, kind of the old, the old motto, go prepared. One of the best ways to prepare is by utilizing the town of Tropic, not only for its convenient post and pre-adventure supplies, but also to use it as a center point for all of the exploration that you can do in the area. We're based out of Tropic, which is kind of a, a central hub for a lot of these trails out here. You can go and ride. Uh, there's a really nice gas station uh, in Tropic that you can get your side-by-sides and ATVs into. Um, good little restaurant right there, kind of a grab-and-go. A few good restaurants there as far as the barbecue place. The pizza place is really good. Um, quick and easy, in and out stuff. And there's plenty of hotels and vacation rentals and places to stay in Tropic. Tropic makes a great base camp to base out of because you can go several directions out of there and hit lots of different trails. After you stop in Tropic, head south and follow the Cottonwood Road for a one-of-a-kind journey through a land that not even pictures can quite describe. For At Your Leisure and this week's Where To, I'm Nick Chase. Oh, there's a lot of beautiful country. Uh, the white ledges you can see behind us are always beautiful, and we've run into some red ledges also. Every weekend in Kanab, when the weather's decent, it, we're loaded with ATVs and UTVs and everything to go out. It's a lot better if you go with a guide guys know what's there to see. If you just come out on your own, you're going to miss a lot of stuff. When we 
go on vacation, I never ask, are we there yet? Because my daddy makes sure each stop we make is at Eagle's Landing. They have such cool things for kids, like a petting zoo. They have the cleanest bathrooms on earth. And daddy doesn't freak out pulling up to the pumps, because they're really big and he says it's the best gas in the world. And you can get your tired fits, like we had to. Oh, and their food is so yummy. Eagle's Landing is so much fun, I don't care if we ever get there. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. You know, one of the things that we talk about a lot, or, uh, you know, we talk about with a lot of off-road folks out there is aftermarket accessories. And the cool thing about UTVs is everybody gets to, to modify it and change it and kind of put your own style into it. You can kind of make them into whatever you want to make them into. And so when I think about aftermarket accessories and I think about bolt-on stuff, I think about stuff that has function and is cool. I like both of these things. So let's talk about winches for a second. Winches are a great function to have, but it's also a safety issue. You know, if you're out in the woods and you get stuck, there's nothing better than a good winch. Or if you know you have a buddy with a flat tire, you're gonna go winch onto it and pull it over. So there's a lot of great purposes you can use a winch for. So that is like one of my number one things when I put onto a car. So there's quite a few different ways that you can mount a winch on a vehicle. There is uh, mounting brackets you can buy that do them externally, you can do them internally. Um, synthetic rope is what we use. I don't personally like cables. There's quite a few mounting options when it comes to winches. You can get them to mount externally, you can mount them on bumpers. Um, there's quite a few different ways that you can mount those. Um, there's different weight weightings that we have. You can get a 3,500 pound winch, a 4,500 pound, 5,500 pound winch. I run 5,000 pound winches minimum on about everything we have because we have heavy cars. But on a normal two seater UTV, a 3,500 pound winch is ample for about anything you'd want to use. Another thing is lighting. So when it comes to aftermarket lights, there's a lot of options out there. There's light bars out there, there's pod lights, there's rock lights, there's whips. There's quite the array of, uh, quite the variety out there of things that you could buy. Um, for me personally, Personally, if you're going to be wheeling in a place where you might possibly roll a car over, which I do from time to time, um, I kind of buy the cheapest things out there. I'm kind of an Amazon shopper when it comes to light bars. Are they as good as the big brand name expensive lights? No, they're not. But they do a pretty darn good job. So if you want to spend $500 or $1,000 on a really good light bar, um, they are brighter and they work better. But for me personally, I buy the cheapest thing on Amazon because I'm probably going to break it. There is a safety issue that comes along with this. You know, if you're coming down late at night, um, you want to be able to see well when you're you know in the mountains and if you have LED lights on you're coming down a canyon somebody who's coming up can see you from a long ways away so they know to slow down if you're coming out of blind corners and it's nice to be able to see if wildlife is coming out of the road um, the factory lights on these are not great so you know having some aftermarket lights on there is a really good thing to have and they are a lot better than what comes factory on the car so that's just my personal preference but there is a lot of great light companies out there that make a lot of really high quality light bars and the other thing that is most important to me, no matter what, the very first thing we do when we build a car, we put an aftermarket cage on. Safety is the most important thing. You never plan on a wreck, and sometimes bad things happen. There's nothing more important than your life, your occupants, and your family. So aftermarket cages are a big deal to us. And one of the things when you're buying an aftermarket cage, uh, the, the companies that make those, they make glass windows for them, they make tops for them. So before you spend your money on stuff for a factory cage, you should consider looking into an aftermarket cage, something that's safer, and then you can get a glass window or you can get a top or, or accessories for that cage from the manufacturer that you're buying it from. But safety will always be the number one priority. It's the most important thing to us when we build a car, and that should be something that you consider when you buy a car. We'll be right back with that, your leader. Tickaboo stands alone in the desert, an oasis to those who seek adventure. Ride straight from the parking lot to the open desert. When I say open, I mean wide open. 
Visit Outsiders.Zone for 360 degree trail tours or Tickaboo.com to book your next adventure. Safety, 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 safety tips with Steve. Today we want to talk about how to be a better visitor. When you're riding in town, turn your music down, turn your lighted whips off, and obey the speed limit. Remember, when you're on an ATV trip, we're visitors in their home. Be respectful. Let's be a better visitor. Safety, 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 safety tips with Steve. At Stedman's Recreation, trucks are arriving daily with back-ordered side-by-sides, ATVs, and dirt bikes. Let Stedman's Recreation help get you outside so you can explore and create memories to last a lifetime. Call or stop by Stedman's to hold your side-by-side, -side, ATV, or dirt bike with a small deposit. Yamaha, Honda, Polaris, and Beta. Plus, Stedman's has a full service department and Honda power equipment. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. You may think it's 300 miles out here, but remember, it's only 30 miles back. System overload. Seek nature. Seek adventure. Paiute County. The perfect place to unplug. OHV is the only way. See for yourself at outsiders.zone. Oh man, this place brings back such great memories. You, sh you should go up on the deck, spend an entire day's pay, and order a dish of strawberries here. <laughs> I mean, it's just really, really good. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're spending the day out on Coronado Island in San Diego, just kind of a decompression day. Yeah, and we have the iconic Hotel Coronado right behind us. Just absolutely fabulous. Been here forever. Um, what a day it's been. Yeah, you know, I've actually stayed in one of those rooms in the tower. Oh, yeah, that's right. You told me you stayed I way stayed, up there. I stayed in the tower rooms, yeah. and they're really kind of claustrophobic because the door, is, it's a little wedge, and the window's not big enough for good ventilation. So did you pay for it, or did you I, sneak up there? <laughs> <laughs> you snuck I up. There. I stayed there. I saved up money. <laughs> anyway, let's check out some of the other things that you can do around the island. It's a very friendly community. It's just very homey, and I like being here a lot. So it has a lot of tourism, but it's also very um, like a close-knit community as well. So Coronado is unlike a lot of places around San Diego. You can get around the island in six miles, so there's a lot of things to experience, and you can basically see the whole island in uh, a day. Yeah, so there's really a range of hotels here. There's like just like the small little boutique hotels that are just really sweet and they look like little French provincial places, just adorable. And then they have the larger, you know, the larger places and then you got the big Coronado out there on the ocean. And that, the Glorietta is beautiful, it's expensive, but it's really, really pretty. And there's just, you know, you'll find what you need here at your price that you're looking for. This feels good. The only problem I'm having with the day is we take the bikes and I'm saying, oh, I'm having so much fun, I could do this all day. And then the little surreys come by and say, oh, that'd be so much fun, I could do that all day. And then I see the watercraft out there uh, that you can rent and I say, oh, I could do that all day. So I'm not sure this is really a weekend option. When you ride along the bike path, along the water, there's always workout equipment. So Chad and I are gonna challenge each other in some pull-ups. Yeah. <laughs> One more time, Chad. Oh, three to charm. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> All right, that was great. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm the one that got the workout. Sand dollars. Woo! The beach, there's nothing wrong with the beach ever. The water's so warm. You got the gold. The golden sand is so pretty. Hey, you got a dollar. I know. Do you think I could cash it in? Uh, <laughs> you think I could get a? There's probably a somebody. Drink with it? There's probably somebody that would pay you a dollar for it. I didn't want to give it to Tyler. Well, you can see you'll be fat and happy. Well, <laughs> if you spend a little time 
checking out the stuff here on Coronado Island. When you're done biking, you just walk. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, honestly, you can you can walk around this whole island and you wouldn't even know that you walked all day and you get great exercise. That's true. And look, and Coldwell Banker, we could buy a house here. <laughs> oh, can we? No. I, I oh, like is that a talk. hard no? That's a hard uh, no. Not a soft no. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so right now it's time for us to move on to our Along the Way. We've still got some more surprises for you ahead. We'll be back. Oh man, I love it. Last year we started off with maybe 13 teams. 14 I think was the first competition of the SCA. And now we're pushing 63 teams. Hopefully we'll be able to hit that 100 mark by the end of the summer. This is huge. It's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. This barbecue state championship series that Barbecue Pit Stop Scott going, people are drawn to it, not just from Utah, but there's six other states from people coming from all over. There's kids competing. How many teenagers are competing? Four or five? Yeah, there's a fair amount and it's just gonna keep happening. I want to see the kids get out here. I want to see the future of our sport to grow. Um, recently, they changed the age bracket to where younger cooks can actually come in and cook. They used to have just kids only, but now they can compete with the adults now as well. So it was, that was a really nice change that the SCA did. Man, I love watching my son cook. Um, it makes me happy. I love that he can actually, he's independent on it now. He's cooking enough, he's confident, he can cook by himself. and. I just really hope that he wins. You know, I like to see him walk. I'd rather I take a back seat to AJ any day. Cooking some steak at the competition, trying to beat my dad. I'm 15 years old. I think it's pretty fun to learn. It'll be fun to teach my kids one day. Um, I feel pretty good about it. I think I got a good cook on it, and the flavor's pretty good. So yeah, I feel pretty good about it, but. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, so. It's fun, but my dad can be kind of stressful because he's really like, get this done right now, and he kind of underestimates the time we need for everything. So it gets pretty stressful with him. And my mom, she's pretty good at it, so. My dad taught me. Yeah, he taught me how to do the steaks and everything, but I've always wanted to do it. I was always just too nervous or too young to do it. So he taught me how to do it. Cool. And now you know better than him? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> It is pretty cool. I like it. I had so much fun uh, prepping for the steaks, uh, doing all the seasonings. With my flavor, I think I did really good. Uh, I did really good on tender. I'm not sure on uh, done. That's my question. I was on time most of the time. I got I turned in at 2:20, so I was pretty proud of that. Right between. So I was I thought I was gonna miss the turn in time and I just was gonna be like, well now I have two stakes that I can't turn in. So I guess I kinda had I had to write out a timeline so I wouldn't miss it. So like what to do at what time. But I ended up making it in like halfway through the time, so it would feel good to win. Just so I could be like, hey look I won and you guys are like tw like twice the age older than me. It got pretty nerve wracking I guess and <laughs> I was just trying to go as fast as I could to get it done. I think I was the last one to get the steak in. Last steak. Some of the best ribeyes in the state. Diary. We went camping for our vacation on Tusher Lake. We did so many fun things. You know, I learned something on this trip. Camping on Tusher Lake is way more fun than any old mouse in an amusement park. Yes. 
The great outdoors is wide open. So why not make the most of it? Expand your family's freedom with the off-road's best. Like the only built-in GPS that doesn't require a cell connection. And group tracking that lets you spread out and stay together. Upgrade your ride for as little as $5 a day. Polaris. Think outside. Where in the world is Joseph? Oh, you know. It's the place that has the best burgers in Sevier County. A campground where you can ride straight to the Paiute Trail from town. OHV access to Fremont State Indian Park. Are you serious? You've never stopped in Joseph? You are missing out. The Old West is still alive in Jueb County. Stories of the past are hidden in the desert mountains. From relics of mining history to places of outlaw mystery, tall tales to be discovered and buried treasure to be uncovered. Jueb, the key county of Utah. And after all the pedaling and walking and hanging out today, my dogs are barking. Woof, woof. Oh, man. Yeah. You know what? You worked out hard today. For an old guy, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's do a little yoga here. <laughs> um. Well, we look like everybody else around here. Everybody's chilling. This is just such a beautiful park. You know, we were, amongst the film crew, we were talking a little bit earlier today. With all the tight-packed houses and the little teeny tiny yards, uh, it was like, well, where do the kids play? But they have places for that. They've got two or three really nice parks on the island. On yeah. the civilian side, I think there's some more on the military side. Yeah. And you can come here with your kids, your dogs can, you know, get a little, of course they gotta be on a leash, but you can stretch their legs. I saw somebody over there with their pet bunny rabbit. Oh. <laughs> I did, the little bunny was well, jumping around. bunnies need grass to eat, this exactly. is great. Exactly, well, this is just a, such a sweet, it's just a beautiful little island, it's gorgeous. Well, we still got a little bit more of the show ahead, but it's time to get to the business, so let's find out what's up. Next week on At Your Leisure, Gina and Kevin are back, and this time they are headed out to the Rally on the Rocks, which is a great multi-day UTV event featuring trail rides and vendor shows. But it will be a new adventure this year as the event is taking place in a new location. Then, Nick Chase is showing off some of the great day-use activities just outside of Escalante as he visits Devil's Garden and Zebra Slot. Finally, do you know where your salt comes from? Join us and we'll show you not only how we get it, but how to have fun while you're doing it. Well, you know, usually we say next week's show looks great, but I really, I can't say that in comparison to this week because right. this has just been so really wonderful. I'm not to, not to knock next week's show, it's gonna be a lot of fun, but <laughs> this is much needed. Exactly, you know, being cooped up for a whole year, it's just been brutal for everybody and coming out here, it's just fresh air, sunshine, beautiful breeze, and God bless America with this wonderful military base that they have out here. You, you better say that one of the helicopters is coming <laughs> right now. Woohoo! <laughs> I love it. It's fabulous. Just, just remember, you can find it, this itinerary on our website. You can come down and do what we did. We'll show you the places that we went today. That's right. So remember, there is adventure around every bend. Just got to get out there and create your own adventure at, at your, your leisure. leisure. We'll see you next time. Okay, walking in the sand. I know that there is a song about this. Yeah. Like Ooh.